Hello everyone. Well, this is an event that doesn't happen very often, so I thought I would film it. This is my living room, the room that I unbox most of the vacuum cleaners and put down a load of dirt. And as you can see, the carpet's changed a bit because we haven't got a carpet. It's gone. The carpet's gone, hasn't it, Molly? Molly and Daisy are wondering where the carpet's gone. And most of the furniture has been removed as well. All we've got left in the room are two chairs and the sofa, less their cushions, of course. But that doesn't stop Daisy. She's still having a bit of a, a sit down. Aren't you Daisy May? Yes. So later on today, about 2 p.m., hopefully, we're going to have a new carpet fitted, a new underlay as well, because the carpet we had in this room, I haven't vacuumed, I do apologise. This is the hallway. And um, it's this. This is the carpet that's fitted throughout the house. Hardly any pile to it. Very cheap carpet. Um, it follows through. Every room in the house has this carpet. We bought this house from brand new and this was what was fitted. So all the other carpets in the house are fine. They don't get so much wear, they don't get so much shampooing. Uh, but the living room carpet, obviously, it gets a lot more wear. This, this is the, uh, obviously the main living area. And what's happened, and I didn't take a, I should have taken some video of the carpet before, but I needed to get rid of the carpet. So basically I, I cut the carpet up into strips and the underlay, rolled it up, taped the rolls together and they went in the car and were taken to the tip. So what happened, because the carpet, surprisingly, a lot of people have asked me, was there a lot of dirt underneath the carpet when you took it up? And there wasn't. So despite the fact I've put a load of muck on this carpet throughout the years, it didn't penetrate. It was dusty underneath, but I think that was from when the carpet was originally laid because they wouldn't have properly cleaned the floor. You know, the um, developers, the builders, they might have swept it briefly, but it wouldn't have had a proper clean. Okay, well, Molly and Daisy seem very relaxed. So let's, I'll just assume the position again. Obviously the lighting will be a bit different later on. It's getting a bit darker now. So here we go. Here is no carpet and in a shake of a lamb's tail or a wave of a magic wand, here is the new carpet. Well, here we go. Here's the new carpet, and uh, hmm, it's a bit, it's a bit more shaded than I thought it was going to be. There's Daisy May. Now, don't you dare, Daisy, christen this carpet, not for at least a, a week, before you piddle on it. Um, yeah, it's very, very shaded because it's, um, as you can see, it ha I have to say, unfortunately, it's been vacuumed, but you see how there's a lot, you see, there's a lot of pile. They actually did, surprisingly, they had to trim the bottom of the doors, um, for which we had to pay 30 pounds, but we couldn't have done it. So 15 pound a door and we've got new threshold chips so it's a lot lot deeper isn't it Daisy we've got a new threshold chip here onto the kitchen floor and uh, a new threshold strip I thought we'd get a new ones because it's it makes it neater here look so yes now apparently they did vacuum I was upstairs with the dogs keeping them quiet and I did hear what sounded like a very poorly vacuum being used but they had to vacuum the sawdust from the bottom of the doors but apparently they were using a Henry without any attachments it was just the hose so apparently one of the chaps was on his hands and knees with just the hose end of the Henry cleaning the carpet like that so obviously it's going to need a proper vacuum. So I'm going to set up my tripod, 
put some better lights I've only got the main light on here so I'll get a couple of my lights in and we'll try out some vacuums and see which one works best and we've got a bit of spare carpet as well here if I can turn on the light so I've got some bits of carpet to uh, if I need to demonstrate carpet washer I need to make a bit of carpet dirty there's a few nice sort of off cuts but it seems I don't I think that's a lot thicker I don't know if this is the carpet we ordered you know I don't remember the sample in the shop having a pile that big I suppose it was it was bound by the uh, the samples were bound you know um, what do they call it around the edges it didn't actually show the bare edge in the samples so you couldn't see the depth but that is quite a deep pile isn't it okay then folks it's time to move little Daisy and get a few different vacuums out and see how they perform on this new carpet well folks here's just a little selection of cleaners I managed to grab I haven't got these particular machines out for any other reason than they were easy to get hold of obviously I could have chosen a lot of other different machines but these were the ones I could get out in short notice so I've got quite a selection to test on this new carpet from the 1980s. We have this lovely, almost new Hoover Turbo Power, very popular machine in the UK. Then one of my latest and most expensive vacuum cleaners, the Cobold Tiger with the EB400 head. And that's the same head as on the VK200 upright. Then the latest Shark cordless with the duo clean and anti hair wrap technology it has been used as my daily vacuum so i'm going to have to empty that before i demonstrate it on this carpet i thought i'd get a robotic cleaner this is my nito and then again i think this is from the 80s but it's an american vacuum cleaner a hoover concept 2 electronic needs a bit of a dust but uh, we've got different settings low medium plush and the shag i'm going to try it on plush i think for this carpet then the latest dyson again i'll have to empty that the v11 absolute and the latest dyson mains powered upright the dyson small ball allergy and to finish the oldest cleaner in the lineup this hoover junior dating from I think about 1935 36 that sort of age so quite a lot of different cleaners some bagless ones some bagged some mains powered cordless and of course one robotic machine so without any further ado let's start vacuuming okie dokie let's have a go first with this Hoover Turbo Power I've got it on the sort of medium pile setting on the height control. So let's see how well it pushes and how well it grooms. Well, as you can see, the turbo power has a reputation for being one of the better grooming vacuum cleaners and that certainly completely transformed the pile this is a vacuum i would have to use after vacuuming i'd have to finish all in the same direction to get the nice lines but yes it was slightly hard to push i might have to reduce the power it's a two-speed motor on this i'm not sure if it would help if i raised the head but yes, it's going to take some getting used to using um, different vacuums on a completely different pile carpet to the one I'm used to, to uh, demonstrating on. This is a much plusher, denser pile than all the other carpets in my home. Okay, well, next on the lineup is the very expensive Cobold Tiger. So let's see how well that works. I'm going to use the Tiger on its automatic setting so it should adjust the motor speed and the speed of the brush roll according to the surface it's cleaning. Well that's the theory, let's give it a go. Ah! That 
flashing light indicates that the brush has stalled and automatically switched off. It started quite well, bringing up the carpet pile, but yeah, it didn't like it. So I'm gonna to have to try it on the soft setting and then I'll ramp it up to medium to see if it still works. But I know if I was to put this on maximum, I think the brush roll will stop again, but hopefully on soft, it'll still work. Well, that's a shame. Such an expensive vacuum cleaner can't cope with a plush pile carpet. So it's working fine on the soft setting. Now let's see what happens when I increase the power to medium. So I can only use the Vorvec or Cobalt Tiger on its soft setting on this carpet. That is quite disappointing. I don't know if it's the carpet's fault or the vacuum's fault, but you'd think a vacuum cleaner with a self-adjusting head would be able to cope with a plush pile, but this one can't. And also I found, if I was to stop moving, even on soft, if, I'm to, if I stop moving the head, it will cut out again. So watch this, I'll turn it on. So everything's fine. It's, it is grooming the pile nicely and it will be picking up the loose fibres that will be in this newly made carpet. But as soon as I stop, when it's stalling, it hasn't actually turned off yet. It did turn off earlier. Oh, it's fine now. It's making a liar of me, but it did actually stop. So, I can use it but only when using it on the soft mode. But, you know, you can't fault the grooming action of the uh, EB400 head. Okay, first cordless to look at, the new Shark with DuoClean and anti-hair wrap technology. I've got high hopes for this Shark cleaner because this is one of the only cleaners that will clean my very deep pile rug that I used to have in the middle of this living room. All the other cleaners it's stalled on, including my Dyson V11. So I'm thinking that the Shark will perform very well on this plush carpet. I'm just going to do it on its regular setting. I'm not going to go into boost, but I will try it in boost as well. And obviously I'm going to slide the switch to the carpet setting. Okay, let's see how it works. So even on boost, I could still move the head of this Shark Duo Clean vacuum very easily. So this is certainly one I'll be able to use for my day-to-day -day vacuuming. Next cleaner on the lineup is another big, heavy American vacuum, the Hoover Concept 2 Power Drive. Now, if this big American beast can't cope with a plush carpet, I don't know what will. This is an American cleaner, as I said, and of course, Americans are quite fond of their plush carpeting and shag pile back in the day. And this cleaner has shag, plush, and low to medium pile. So, for the first time ever, I'm going to try it on the plush setting. I've always used low to medium. So it's on plush, and this one has electronic speed control. So I can adjust the speed of the motor. And I'm not sure if this is correct. Any of my American viewers who have one of these, if you'd like to comment below. I did notice this when I first unboxed this machine. I can press the decrease and increase speed buttons with the machine off. And as you can see, the indicator lights do go up. So that's on maximum. So when I switch the machine on, it will obviously operate with maximum suction and also maximum speed on the agitator. I'm just going to lower it, I think 
just down to two notches and see how that does. Well, I think I can safely say that the winner so far is the Hoover Concept 2 electronic, even when I ramped it up to full suction, I was still able to push it. Obviously, this machine does benefit from power drive, so it does actually assist itself as it goes across the carpet. I'm not sure how easy it would be to push if I was to disengage the power drive. Now, obviously, we don't have headlights. I meant to fit some, but I couldn't find the bulbs. But I do have two headlights that fit this cleaner. So, really, there should be no headlight here. And this machine also has a rather handy handheld vacuum built in. You simply take the mains cord off the machine and plug it into the back of the little Hoover Helpmate. We actually got the Helpmate model in the UK, but it was called DustVac and it was fitted in a sort of, it's a burgundy colour um, but it was more or less this same cleaner but it didn't have a detachable cord it was permanently attached cord on it so I thought this cleaner would do well and it certainly did they don't make them like they used to now one cleaner I'm quite dubious about is my Nito I'm not sure how well it's going to cope with a plush carpet so this is my Nito, one of the many robotic vacuums I have and one of my favourites, it seems to do a good job and I like the way it's logical in the way it cleans, unlike, sorry for that interruption, I've just had Nito switched off so it's been turned back on again and it's just connected back to my Wi-Fi, hopefully that uh, flashing light, <laughs> warning light won't matter when I turn it on, it should be on its dock really, so I think it's just upgrading because I've had it switched off. So yes, I like the Neato. I like the fact that it's this shape. I like the fact that it has a more traditional brush roll and a nice width brush roll as well. But yes, compared to the, the Roomba cleaners I've got and other robotic vacuums, it does seem to be a lot more logical. Normally I would set this going from the dock. You can set it going from the app on your phone and it will systematically clean. But I'm just going to do a very short, small area just to see if it will cope with this plush carpet pile. It's going quite slowly, it's cleaning up to the uh, edge of the room at the moment. It is leaving some track lines as you can see, but it's a little bit haphazard, it's not giving a consistent result. It's going to bump into the turbo power. Ah, uh, no it's not, it's moving. But at least it's going quite slowly. I mean, the Nito does go fairly slowly. 
but at least it does work on this plush carpeting it's just getting mixed up with my uh, lights there I'll be showing you the Nito and other robotic vacuums in more detail at a later date but we'll just for now turn it off and pop it over here but at least it does run on this plush carpeting which uh, I'm quite happy about so next up the much hyped Dyson V11 this is the V11 absolute model and for this brief test I'm going to use it on the auto setting which uh, is medium on here you can go for eco medium and boost I'm going to try it on boost as well I have a feeling it might struggle on boost but if I switch to medium it will be in automatic mode because it knows when I've got the high torque head connected it knows to go into automatic also on the high torque head I've got the suction control on the middle setting where I'd normally have it if I find it hard to push on the middle setting I can of course reduce it to the minus setting so it should be easier to push but we might not get such a deep clean certainly for a deeper clean we'd need to put it on plus but then again it might be very hard to push so I'm just going to try it first on the default setting that I would use the middle setting on the torque head and the automatic setting on the cleaner itself okay <laughs> straight away it's actually stopped I'll try it again right obviously no on automatic and with the slider control midway it just stalls it does not move well it moves slightly and then it cuts off just try it once more we'll just get an angle a little bit of a shot of the head in close up so on that setting it's a bit of a fail another expensive vacuum cleaner that can't cope with a plush pile carpet. Now, I'm hoping that by sliding the red dial, the red selector, onto minus, we might actually be able to clean. So it's still on automatic. Oh dear, a little bit better, but yeah it's still stalled and it was very very hard to push well my only other option now well I've got two options I'm going to pop it back into the middle setting but this time I'm going to have to reduce the power and the only other option I've got I know if I do it on boost it will not move at all if it doesn't work on auto it certainly won't work on boost I'll have to select eco which of course gives the less least amount of suction so it might work but we're not going to get a very deep clean Okay, so it's on eco with the slider in the middle. Finally, we have success. It does work although it's pretty hard to push. That's as hard work as using a big upright vacuum, a mains powered upright vacuum. So to make it a little bit easier to push, one last test, we'll put it into the minus setting. A bit easier to push but it didn't groom the carpet as well the head was skipping rather a lot across the carpet so unfortunately if you have a plush carpet like this and you want a Dyson V11 you might find it's not going to be very suitable okay let's see if this mains powered Dyson can do any better this does have an adjustable control very similar to the V11 on the main cleaner head so again it's going to be in the middle section and there's no way of controlling the suction on this machine so let's see how well this cleans
Okay, well, the brush roll didn't stall, but it was very hard to push. It did a good job of grooming, as you could see. And this carpet obviously isn't really, somebody did actually mention when I said I was getting a new uh, carpet on Facebook, they said, wait till you see how much loose fibers come out of that new carpet. Well, there's hardly anything coming out of it. It was vacuumed with a Henry, as I said earlier, but just the surface bits would have been picked up. Um, just the loose fibers that were obviously produced when the carpet was cut to fit, but yeah. So that is possible on a plush pile, but for ease of use, I'm just going to try it finally on the minus setting. That is definitely a great improvement. Much easier to push, certainly easier than the V11, but of course we had to reduce the suction at the head. But it grooms well. So yes, this isn't bad if you want a Dyson for plush carpeting, but of course you'll have to have it in the minus position on the cleaner head. Now to finish the video, and it's only for a bit of fun, I'm going to bring out a really old antique vacuum. Followers of my social media channels will have probably seen this. I've opened this fairly recently. I haven't done an unboxing video of this machine. This is a Hoover Junior from about the mid thirties, I'd say. I'm just going to check that the belt is attached. Yeah, it's in fairly good order, but this has got the traditional metal agitator, the Hoover Beats as it sweeps, as it cleans action. I do ha actually have a set of new brushes I can fit. These aren't too bad, but I've not actually, this is gonna be the first time I've switched this machine on. So I'm hoping it's going to work. So in absence of a, an unboxing video, I've got the full set of cleaning tools for this as well, plus the original instruction book. So because I've never had this on before, I'm going to just turn it on at the handle and switch it on a little bit away away just to make sure it's not going to blow up. Right, it didn't blow up and it's, it's not live so I should be okay. I'm not really sure what this is going to be like. I don't think they had this sort of carpet back in the day when this machine was being used in households across the UK. Well, this Hoover Junior was quite easy to push. I don't think it's got the suction of some of the modern cleaners. And because the brushes, I think, need replacing, it didn't groom quite as well as the Dyson previously. But for such an old vacuum cleaner, it's done a relatively good job. I will be demoing this with some dirt in a later video. But this is probably, at the time I'm making this video, one of my oldest vacuum cleaners and probably one of the oldest I'll ever own. You know, very popular vacuum cleaner back in the day. Okay, well that's all the vacuums tested. I'll line them up again and uh, I'll give you my conclusions. Okay, so I've ranked the cleaners from best to worst, in my opinion, using them for a brief moment on this particular carpet. 
obviously carpets vary greatly homes vary it might perform better on your carpets in your home but if you've got a plush type carpet you might want to reconsider some of the models I'm showing you. Obviously, some of the models I'm showing you are just gone out for fun. You can't buy them anymore. So for me, the top performing and the one I'm going to use to vacuum this whole living room before the carpet goes back is this rather lovely Hoover Concept 2 electronic. As this Hoover is an American machine, it was made for American carpets and American homes, and American homes tend to be larger than homes in the UK and tend to have more carpeting. Well, they certainly did when this beast was in the shops. I do like this cleaner. It is a big, hefty machine, but the power drive does help it to move across this plush carpeting, and it did a very good job of grooming. The second best, and this one is certainly more suitable for UK homes and very familiar to many of you watching, is the Hoover Turbo Power, one of the best grooming upright cleaners, in my opinion, that Hoover have made. Even better, in my experience, than the bigger Hoover Turbo Master. If I'd got my Turbo Master to hand, I could have used that, and that might have come quite high up as well. It would have been certainly somewhere, maybe in between the Concept and the Turbo Power, maybe third, but anyway. This cleaner works well on the right setting, and it grooms the carpet superbly. Now for a cordless machine, this shark had no problem, even on maximum, at going over this plush style carpeting. And although I didn't get a mains powered shark out, I think any mains powered shark that's got the duo clean head, especially the new anti hair wrap head, should be fine on plush carpeting. But I'll have a look at a mains powered shark upright in a later video. Now, a lot of people will be saying, how can you put such an antique vacuum cleaner ahead of Dyson's latest upright? Well, it's just my opinion. Obviously, this is not a practical machine to use this day and age. It has a cloth bag that's very messy to empty. And uh, I didn't really like using it. I don't really like using very old cleaners. I don't feel quite safe somehow. So it's possibly not as electrically safe, perhaps, as a modern machine. But in my opinion, it was easier to push and it did a good job. But certainly the Dyson did groom better. But to get that easy grooming action and the fact that it was easier to push, I did have to adjust the head to the minus position. But it's, it's an OK machine if you want a mains powered Dyson. There's not a lot of choice these days, but I would recommend the small ball allergy, but as I said, be aware on different types of carpet, you might have to adjust the head, but at least you do have an adjustment. With some cleaners without an adjustment, you're either stuck with getting a new carpet or a different vacuum cleaner if it just won't clean the carpet in your home. The Neato here, obviously I didn't use it for very long and I will be using it properly when all the furniture's back and I'll be able to give a better assessment but it did move across the carpet. The Neato does go quite slowly compared to some robotic vacuums, but it does it systematically, which is what I like about the Neato. It, it's not bouncing randomly around the room. It will, when it's set up properly, go in straight lines. So this might be a good machine to use if I want nice straight lines on the carpet, although it didn't groom anywhere near as well as the mains powered uprights. I really like this Cobalt Tiger vacuum cleaner. In fact, it's one of the most expensive vacuum cleaners I've ever bought. In fact, I think it is the most expensive vacuum. I think normally this retails for around £900 with just what you see here. None of the additional accessories. You have to buy them separately, including the small cleaning tools. I did get this when this was on offer, but it was still extremely expensive. I did have all the additional tools because I have the upright version and I have all the tools for that. So if you have the upright VK200, the tools for that do fit this model. So you can use it to clean your mattresses, you can use it to clean your floors, you can freshen your carpets with a special carpet shampoo attachment. Uh, it's got a polster boy attachment for cleaning upholstery and many, many different attachments. So it is a very, very versatile machine uh, it's a keeper for me. I do like it, but unfortunately the EB400 head just couldn't cope with this plush type carpeting 
unless I have it on soft, which means it's not going to get such a deep clean. And this is quite a thick pile carpet, so I do need a cleaner that's going to reach to the bottom of the pile. So that is why this machine is near the bottom, because as you saw, it's not very good on this carpet. And finally, and I know this is going to be controversial with a lot of you Dyson fans, but I haven't faked the results. You did see how it struggled on this carpet. For plush type carpeting, this machine is no good at all, apart from if you use it on the eco setting and you have the slider to the minimum setting. So as you can see on eco, it does move across the carpet. And it does a reasonable job of grooming, but certainly nowhere near as good. Certainly the Dyson Small Ball Allergy does a much better job than the V11, despite the fact that, of course, Dyson claim that the V11 and the V10 is a replacement for your mains power vacuum. I'm still not convinced that basically any cordless cleaner yet is a total replacement for a mains power vacuum. Not in my house, certainly. I like clean carpets. And although this will keep my carpets clean on a day-to-day -day basis for a deep clean, and certainly before I was to shampoo a carpet, I would get out a mains powered upright. I would not rely on this very expensive machine. So that is why, and I know I'll get a lot of thumbs down for this, but this is just my, my view for this video. That is why the Dyson V11 comes bottom for cleaning my new plush carpeting. Well, there you go, that's the end of my video. Just a bit of fun, getting out a few random vacuum cleaners for my collection and trying them on my new living room carpet. And obviously you'll see this carpet in many videos because this is the room I do most of my demonstrations in. But I can also do demonstrations in the rest of my house that has got a shorter pile carpet. And obviously I'll be doing hard floor demos as well. So, this is just a video, it's inspired actually by a comment from a viewer who had bought a new carpet and found that their Dyson couldn't cope with it and was asking what I could recommend. Well, unfortunately, unless I can go round to your house with lots of different vacuums, I can't really recommend what would be suitable. But what I would say, if you want a vacuum that will cope with different types of carpet, I would probably go for one that's at least got an adjustable control on the head or suction control, either electronic or manual, so you can reduce suction power so it's easier to push. And also a machine that you can adjust the height of, whether it's automatic or whether it's manual, that's another one to look for. That reminds me actually, I did get a SIBO. A SIBO X7 with the automatic self-adjusting head might cope very well on this type of carpet. So I'll have to show you that in a future video. If you have any comments or questions about any of these vacuum cleaners, please comment below and I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Bye for now.